All right, welcome to episode eight of Behind the Turf. My name is Phil Jackson, managing partner, and I am joined with Ruth Wilkerson, who answers all of my customers' concerns <laughs> and questions. And enjoys it despite that term, <laughs> despite that tone. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Jared Koenig. Yo. And he's our agronomist and our knowledge guru. Um, and today we are talking about mowing. It's the title of this episode is Mow Your Lawn. And our is this episode sponsored, Phil? It is sponsored. I'm glad you asked. Who is our sponsor? Today? Uh, Nature's Turf. It's still Nature's Turf. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, at Nature's Turf, our expert weed elimination fertilization services guarantee the health of your lawn. At Nature's Turf, our experienced team will make the correct applications at the best time to ensure your lawn is healthy and happy. Happy. <laughs> And weed free. And weed free. All right. Let's get down to it. First things first is everybody tell when was the last time you mowed a lawn? Like I personally mowed a lawn? Oh, yeah. I mean, because women can do what men can do about three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> it was oh, man. A real sweaty endeavor. So, <laughs> uh, oh, man. Well, it's been a few weeks because it's dormant right now. Oh, oh okay. But uh, I've got some onions I got to take the heads off of for sure. Or the yeah. top growth off of, I guess. So maybe three weeks ago. It. It's been a few weeks. Yeah. So what but you're it's time. saying is you're mowing your grass in the winter time. Yes. Uh-huh. Yep. Um, so if we're being honest, mine was probably last June. Um, and I had to borrow the mower. Oh. But listen, I used to mow my yard on a... Every week, I was good about it. But Does that then mean I, you have somebody else mowing your yard every week then? I was just confessing that I did. Okay. okay. But I had children, and it just was I one was of those so things. Worried. I really enjoyed the pruning aspect, and I really want to keep pruning my boxwoods. You know how much I love boxwood. Mm -hmm. And I just needed some help. Plus, I, have, I live in a community where everybody knows what I do, and I needed to make sure I got that every seven-day mowing, and I could yeah. not keep up with it. So yeah, it's tough. Um, we added that into the budget. Nice. So, Nice. And just blamed it on the kids. There you go. <laughs> it's but, you know, it's my, their college fund, man. It's fine. My uh, my guy that helps me, he's such an, you know, he actually, he went on vacation. And so I was like, oh, no, what do I do? I got rid of my mower. And so I walked across the street and borrowed my neighbors. But nice. Um, anyways, uh, you know, I think let's, Jared, tell us a little bit why, you know, why is mowing so important? I don't normally do this, but I'm going to look right into that camera. <laughs> I know that making eye contact. This is yeah. Well, you look, I know you're looking at my beard, and you're like, that guy doesn't believe in cutting anything. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's wooly. I get it. I look a little homeless. I'm not. You know, it's just out there. But I am an absolute eye contact. I'm. A, I believe in mowing grass. I'm an evangelist when it comes to this stuff, and I think that it is that and watering are the two most important things yeah. that a person can do. I mean. Uh, Unequivocally, they're the two most important things on top of a good partner, yeah. like nature's turf. <clears throat> Mowing and watering are the yeah. are the next most important. I mean, things. we talk about it all the time, unendingly, and yeah. I will continue until I am dead. But that's because it solves so many problems. You know, it really does. Yes, but and specifically though, like what what does the act of mowing? To the lawn? A lot of things. First and foremost, uh, the easiest thing for people to understand is that it reduces the amount of injury that happens. You know, when you mow weekly, you are doing a very minimal amount of damage. Every time you mow, you are creating small injuries, you know, to the edge, to the ends of those plants. Uh, but when it's done well, when the blades are sharp, uh, when it's done on a regular basis, it's a very minimal and very easily recovered injury. When you go too long, you're going to create damage that then your plants have to expend a bunch of energy to recover from. There's also other benefits. You know, it stimulates uh, growth, uh, lateral bud, you know, formation and utility. It, you know, creates more density. It encourages spread in stoloniferous turfs like Bermuda and Zoysia. There's a lot of benefits, but first and foremost, and I mean, the most important in my mind for people to understand is the energy, er, the injury reduction and energy retention and creation. Hmm. Teacher, I have an illustration. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so when I was younger, my hair was really, really long and my mom did not want to cut it. And it was just the ends were scraggly and thin and just kind of not great. And the hair, our hair stylist was like, just cut her hair, like just take a good four inches off. And she did. And my hair was so healthy and grew in so thick and shiny 
And it's just the same thing. Like I have to get regular haircuts to get the, you know, keep it, it makes it thicker and fuller. Mm. So it's the same, it's the same concept with your lawn. It just helps it to grow thicker and fuller and have a better canopy. So when you're talking to clients or what, what are, what are we telling clients as far as on a mowing schedule? Like what are we recommending? Every week. Yeah, Yeah. for sure. Once a week at, at the very least, and to make sure that you're not taking too much off at a time. So if they have gone on vacation or in a lot of cases, they have somebody cutting their lawn and they haven't been able to get out there in a couple of weeks. I say, don't take off so much, take off a little bit at a time until you get back down to your desired height. Because like Jared said, we'll have people who call and they say, my lawn is dead. And it turns out that their lawn was very high and they took a whole bunch off at once. Right. And, and the, that's- the bottom of that blade is brown. So you just cut all the color off, basically. Right. You just have stem material at that point. When yeah. you, especially Bermuda grass. Bermuda, I was gonna say, yeah. Yeah. If you're ever out, you know, if you have Bermuda and you're out in your yard, pull a bit of it out and you'll see that they look like little trees, you know, underneath the the canopy where the where the leaf tissue is, where the blades are, is stem material. Mm -hmm. And if you cut all the leaves off, it looks like a brown spot and dirt. Mm -hmm. And Bermuda is a pretty tenacious plant. It'll bounce back if you care for it well. But Ruth's absolutely right. Height and time are, they, they work together in this, in this equation. Yeah. And having a thicker, fuller lawn provides a canopy and less opportunities for weeds to grow because mm. they need sunlight. So you're that was choking the bullet out point there. in the back of my brain. <laughs> you're choking me out too. There sunlight. You're you're doing so many multiple things at once to help your lawn. Yeah. This is our treatments are only one little part of the puzzle. How do clients feel though when you tell them? Because that does sound like a lot every seven days. They don't like it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they, they, or, yeah. or it's expensive. Right. They're having somebody else come right. do it yeah. and they want to wait every two weeks. And it's just, you have to understand. I understand that not everybody can water their lawn. They don't, not everybody has the budget to water all the time. Not everybody has the budget to mow all the time, but you have to change your expectations accordingly. Mm. That's, That's a great that point. Makes. It's changing the expectations. Yeah. yeah. Like I understand because I have a budget too. So you just have to change the way you see that coming out. You can't expect a plush lawn if you can't do the things that it needs to get to that point. I think that, um, you know, one of the things we hear sometimes people will call in and they'll say, you know, I want a golf course lawn, mm-hmm. you know, and it's something that we hear a lot. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, sort of flattering as a former golf course superintendent, because that's what our goal was, right? Our goal is unbelievable density, shortcut, really playable turf, great color, all of those things. And it's because of those professional endeavors that people want that sort of same thing for their lawn. But then you start to break it down for somebody and they understand that, you know, Fairways are cut two or three times a week, even regulated, you know, same with tee boxes. Greens are cut every day or every other day, depending on the season. And they're really short and really tight and not always super healthy. You got to really put a bunch of extra stuff in there to make them as healthy as they can be. And when you start to break it down for people like that, that's why golf courses spend a bunch of labor money and a bunch of money on equipment to mow all the time. And so if you're looking at your, if you're adjusting your expectations for a home lawn, you're mowing once a week and stuff, make sure that your heights are appropriate, you know, one and a half to two inches, you know, for Bermuda grass, maybe a little bit lower than that, depending on the hybrid zoysia variety, but that's a safe height for zoysia too, to be at an inch and a half and weekly mowed to make sure that you're just not doing that damage. And just a little bit of that too has to be how smooth your lawn, the, the surface that's of the lawn true. is. That's you know, true. So it's an experiment a little bit mm-hmm. of getting the right height for your particular lawn. Yeah. If you are really short, that's a good point. If you're really short and you've got like sunken trenches or a lot of uneven surfaces and you notice that you're scalping and stuff as the mower sort of humpty bumps its way through those things, up in the cut height a little bit can help to to reduce those rubs a little bit and, uh, and really help there. As far as like, you know, you're like, oh, people don't like it. People really don't typically like to be told they have to mow a lot because it's seen my goal with my mowing evangelism (laughs) is to try to convince people or at least try to explain to people passionately that this isn't so much a chore. What it is is a time investment and something that if you can find some joy in, I mean, the benefits are innumerable Mm -hmm. and it's, it's every single facet. As we talk about uh, really any sort of plant health concern as far as turf grass growth is, is concerned, good cultural practices, good mowing practices are a really, really great offense in the defense of almost anything mm-hmm. plant health related. Yeah, it's so much more important than people realize. For sure. It's a huge, a huge jump 
for them yeah to do that um kind of wrapping it up though let's you guys already know that I'm doing it every week. I'm mowing every week. Mm-hmm. How are you guys mowing? Weekly. Yeah. Weekly. <laughs> Not me, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I will say, as far as that's concerned, like sometimes we get it. You know, Ruth touched on it a little while ago. You know, weather gets in the way, right? We get mm-hmm. into a really wet, a really wet weather pattern where it seems like every weekend it's going to mow. I mean, it's going to rain, rather, and you can't right. mow. Yes. Um, you know, try to find the time. Shorter time scales are better than longer time scales. If it's been a while, to Ruth's point, come up on your cut heights a little bit so you're not getting way down into that canopy and then do a few, you know, mowings in a row where you're on a shorter time frame, three to five days instead of five to seven, and, you know, work your way back down. You'll get back down there. And one of the things I did when we, when I, before I transitioned to having someone help me do it, I tried to keep doing it even after we had our daughter and I just did the front yard <laughs> one day and from when I got home from work and then I would do the backyard mm-hmm. the next day, just kind of splitting up that time. So I wasn't out in the yard for so long. Yep. Um, and it allowed me to still get it done. And when that rain day did happen, I wasn't so far behind. Exactly. Cause I only had to do one or the other. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Lastly, the one thing I, I will, I will want to touch on because it's important and people don't generally consider this either is be flexible to change your cut heights. When we Mm -hmm. get late in the season, you know, when we get into July, August, especially Bermuda grass surges, I mean, something serious at that point, they're happy, they're healthy, they're growing strong, the days are long, they're making all that energy and they want to be growing. Don't be afraid to come up a notch, half a notch, whatever the case may be. If you notice that you're kind of getting down in that canopy when you mow, bring it up a little bit. There's no shame in that. And then, you know, we can always reset it when it comes time to, to, to do that in the springtime. But if you feel like you're having a hard time keeping up on a seven day turn, Take it down to five days. If you don't want to do that, take it up a little bit. Find the happy medium there. Yeah. But if you call our office in the summer and you're having issues with your lawn, this is probably the first question we're going to ask you. So be prepared. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How, that, are that, how, how, how often, how often are, are you mowing? How often 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 are you mowing? So anyways, now if you guys have anything else to add, we'll just wrap it up. No, I was going to say one thing about when you're talking about notches and cut heights and all that, like we can't give you an exact thing because it's not a universal, like mowers mowers are are not universal, every mower is different. So you really just have to be an active participant in your lawn. And And that's like watering. And we'll hopefully dive into that later, later on in another episode. But all the time people want to know, how how do I set my irrigation system? It's just like, well... It depends on how much water is coming out. Yeah. yeah. What's your yeah. flow rate? Yeah. What's a what? Most people don't know that. You know, we'll get into that a little different that's time because you are asking me to get going. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, that wraps up episode eight of Behind the Turf. Appreciate everybody joining in, and we hope you'll tune in for episode nine.